You guys asked for it, we listened. <laughs> Let's talk about Capture One Pro. I've got it loaded up, very excited. We're gonna talk about getting started with Capture One Pro in this video. So we're gonna do things like importing files into Capture One Pro, creating a session, what a session is, where everything is, and a little bit about exporting as well. And in the next few videos, we're gonna talk about things like working with the layers within Capture One Pro, which is a really big and, and really nice difference actually from Lightroom. We're gonna talk about things like color grading, because there's some really powerful color grading options within the program. But let's just get started now with getting started with Capture One Pro. Before we get straight into it though, if you have anything in particular that you would like to learn about within Capture One Pro, anything in particular that uh, either you've struggled with in the past or something you just wanna, you just wanna go over, pop it down in the comments and we will absolutely make a video about uh, any, any decent suggestion, we'll absolutely make a video because there's loads to go over here. So let's just get started. So, so this is what Capture One Pro looks like when you open it up. As you can see, I've actually used this already to edit some photos and things like that, but otherwise it would look very, very much like this. The first thing we're gonna want to do is create a new session to work in. Now a session is actually a little bit like when you create a catalog in Lightroom, except that it's generally used for a certain and batch of photos. So for example, let's say that you just head out to the seafront and you take, let's say 200 photos and you wanna come back, you wanna go through them, you wanna edit them, things like that. You would create a new session within Capture One Pro for that particular shoot. So that's a really nice way of actually organizing your files. So for example, I'm gonna show you exactly how we do this. We come up to the top here, click File, we click New Session, and then we need to decide where we want this session to actually exist, or what folder we want to put this into. So here you can see Location. I'm gonna click this little button here. Now clicking that little button is gonna open a new window for us to create a folder or to choose a folder to actually house our session in. If for this one in particular, I'm gonna actually create a folder called Getting Started and I'm gonna click Select Folder here. Now, you can see here that it, it allows us to name the session. I'm gonna call this Getting Started. That's a pretty good name. And then we've got some subfolders. Now, you don't need to worry too much about the subfolders. They're usually, I just leave them exactly as they are. Capture, Selects, Output, and Trash. Now, what this is gonna do is within our folder we've just created, which I've called Getting Started, normally I would name that something like the date and then the name of the shoot. So, for example, the date right now is the 15th of January, so I might put 15, 01, 2020, and then something like Seafront Shoot, something like that. So if you name everything in a certain way, if you have a standard naming convention for your different folders, it is going to be incredibly easy going forward finding absolutely anything, whether you want edited photos, raw photos, anything at all, and I'm gonna show you why. When we've created our folder, we've created the Getting Started folder. We're gonna name our session Getting Started. These subfolders are created. Now the Capture subfolder is where it's actually going to, to store all of the raw files that we import into Capture One, into this session. It's actually going to copy those raw files into this new folder so that everything is in the same place. The select subfolder allows us to actually select certain ones that we actually want to go ahead and edit. You don't have to use it that way, but that is quite a nice way. And then the output subfolder is for when we've edited the photos, that's where they're going to be exported to. And this creates a really nice setup. We've got this one folder, in this case it's called Getting Started, where I've got all of my raw files in one folder, I've got all of my edited files in another folder, so if I ever want to go back in a year, in two years, in however long, I've got this, this really nicely organized set of folders with everything I could possibly want in there. Another massive advantage of this is that it allows you to take that, that main folder, the Getting Started folder, which has all of this inside it, and transfer it to an external hard drive, put it on a USB, put it anywhere you like. It's gonna have everything you need in that folder. So organization wise, this is fantastic. Now again, like I say, you just, once you've got this all set up, you just press OK. It's going to just take a second and it's gonna load the new session. So you can see we've got a new session here. We can see right at the top it says getting started, no images in collection. So let's go ahead and bring some images in to this session. Now the easiest way to do that is of course just at the top left here to click import. That's gonna allow us to find some photos that we wanna bring in and just bring them in, import them all or, or import selected ones. Now here you've got import from source. Let's go ahead and, and click this drop down menu 
and click choose folder. Navigate to the folder and you can actually just select the folder and it's gonna show you all of the raw files within that folder that you can import. You can then go ahead and click certain ones to import them, or of course, you can just click import all, which is what I'm gonna do in this scenario. So we've imported all of our photos into Capture One Pro. If I actually show you exactly what that's done with the subfolders as well, I think that's quite helpful. So if you look here, I've got the getting started session folder that I actually created. Let's double click that. Inside there, I've got my four different subfolders, capture, output, selects, and trash. I've also got the actual session file here as well. Now, because all of that is housed within the folder, like I said, for, it'd be really easy to transport this over to another computer, to anything, to put it on an external hard drive, to actually just store it like that. Really, really straightforward. Now within these actual subfolders, most of them will have nothing in them yet because we haven't edited anything, but in the capture folder now, if I double click that, all of the raw files that I've just imported into this session are now in this folder. That means exactly like I said before, if I ever want to go back and find any of these files, it's going to be so easy to do it. As long as I've named things properly, just the sessions themselves, it's gonna be really, really easy. I've got my raw files here, I'll have my edited files in here, just very, very straightforward. So now that I've imported my files into Capture One Pro, I can actually go through and organize them. I can select the ones that I actually want to edit. And there's a few different ways of doing this. So the files actually appear on the right-hand side here. You've got all the images that you've imported. So you can actually go through those. You can assign things like a star rating to them. That's one way of kind of going through and picking the ones you want to edit. You can assign colors to them. And then you can actually filter your selection by star rating or by different colors that you've assigned. So it's easier to go through and find the ones you actually want to edit. Now, let's just have a look at what's going on here. So we've got the images over on the right, and then we've got these different kind of menus over on the left. You've also got your tools right up here at the top. So things like the hand tool to move around, to zoom in and things like that, cropping tool, straightening tool. We'll go through those in more detail in another video, but it's useful to know where they are. Now, over on the left, we've got our different kind of sub menus. So we start off in library, then we move on to capture, which is where you've got your kind of camera settings and things like that. Lens, where you can do things like remove lens distortion or light fall off and things like that and actually play around with the actual image in that sense. Then you move on to things like color and exposure and things like that, working your way through to exporting, sharpening and, and exporting and all that kind of thing. So it's kind of a, a natural uh, progression from the left here, the library, going over to the right, a natural progression of editing your photos and then exporting them. Now, something that I really like about Capture One Pro and something that I think it, it really excels at is it's very, very customizable. So let's say, for example, here, this is how it comes as standard, but let's say here I've got exposure to the right of color. Now, normally I would probably edit my exposure values before I start going into color grading and things like that. So let's say I wanna have exposure to the left as I actually wanna have this nice kind of follow through here. Well, I can just click on exposure, I can alt and drag it to the left of color. And now it's organized in that way. And now every time I create a new session, every time I use Capture One Pro, that is how it's going to be organized, which I think is a really nice way of doing things. Similarly, if you don't like having your images over on the right here, we can actually come up here to view. We can come here to browser, customize browser, and we can actually click place below. And now the images are all on the bottom. So if you want it to look a little bit more like Lightroom, you absolutely can do that. It's a really nice way of working. And I think it, uh, it just allows you to work in the way you want to work as opposed to the way the actual program wants to work. For the sake of this though, I am gonna put them back on the right. Now let's click on one of the photos. I'm gonna show you a little bit about editing here, just a little bit, because we'll go into more detail in future videos. We've got this photo here. Now, of course, we can come over here to exposure, where we've got all our details like uh, white balance, the actual exposure and contrast and brightness, highlights and shadows for a bit of dynamic range, levels and curves. We can go ahead and, and you know edit this as we would in a, in a lot of editing software. You know, this is fairly sort of similar. Then we can come over to color. Now this menu is a big, a big part of what makes Capture One so impressive to me. The color grading on this, the, the potential for creating really interesting edits, I think is really powerful in this program. I find the, the coloring very, very interesting. There's a few different ways you can do it, and again, we'll do a full video on color grading. Um, you've got things like the actual color editor, which is a little bit like the HSL tab in, in Lightroom, where you can edit the actual hues of different things. So for example, the blues here, let's make them more teal, for example, or down towards more purple. 
And there's lots of different things you can do there. You can do it in a more advanced way, protecting skin tones as well. Again, we'll go over this in, in, in significant detail, uh, probably in the next video. I think that's the most interesting one for me. So I think we'll do that next. But then, of course, you've got color balance as well. You can really add color to the shadow, to the midtones, to the highlights. And uh, of course, the curves and the levels tools are very powerful as well. Now, something else I think is worth mentioning while we're talking about this, uh, because something that makes Capture One Pro very different from something like Lyrum, for example, are the layers, the ability to use layers. Now, this is similar to how you would use something like an adjustment brush in Lyrum, a radial filter, uh, a gradient filter, something like that, but it does work differently and it's significantly more powerful, I think. Uh, so here we've got at the top of the exposure kind of submenu here and the color submenu, we've got the layers. And you can see it says background. Now background is just the photo. That's just editing the photo as you would in editing software. It's a, it's a, it's a great way of working, but let's say that I want to apply a little bit of color difference just to this building. I don't know why I do that, but let's say that I do want to. So in color here, we can click this little plus to create a new layer. And now we've got the background layer, which is the whole photo. And then we've got this new layer one. Now I can double click to name this whatever I want to name it. Let's call it building. And then I can either draw a mask or I can use something like the, uh, the gradient mask similar to in Lightroom or a radial uh, gradient mask. Let's use, let's use a gradient mask here. So I can click and drag that in from the right. And you can see the red coming in. That is, uh, that is where the mask is gonna be applied. That's where this layer, anything I do in this layer, that is where it's gonna be applied. You can toggle how you can see that mask as well by clicking this little button here. So always display the mask, it's gonna show that. And then of course I can, I can go in and erase part of the mask if I want to. So I've clicked the little uh, erase mask icon here. You can also get that by pressing E. But if I right click anywhere on the photo, I can adjust the size of my brush now. And I can just go in and start erasing the bits around the sky if I want to, until I've basically just got the actual uh, the actual building masked out. Now that means that this layer that I've called building is now just masked all around the actual building here. So everything I do now on this layer in either exposure or color will affect this building. Let's have a look at how that how that works here. Let's turn this back to only display the mask while drawing. Let's go back to the exposure. Now with the building layer selected, I can bring the exposure up. I can drop it. I can double click to, uh, to bring that back to zero. I can bring the saturation up or down. But something that you can't do in Lightroom, for example, is you can affect everything with this layer. So in Lightroom, you can draw this little mask in, you can affect things like exposure, saturation, stuff like that. But in, in Capture One Pro, I can create a new levels kind of adjustment with just this mask. You know, I can affect a new curves layer with this mask. I can come into color and I can affect loads of different color stuff with this mask. I can make it really blue. I mean, that looks, that looks awful, but it gives you an idea of what you can actually do. You know, and again, like I say, we'll do a full video about working with layers within Capture One Pro. Um, something else that I really like is, let's say I've done this and I actually hate it, which I do, I can bring the opacity down of this layer until maybe I don't hate it. Probably all the way down to zero in this case, but you get the idea of how this would work. We can also just go ahead and actually delete that layer, which is press the minus button there. And we're back to just having the background, just have back to having the, the standard kind of uh, kind of photo editing. Now you can add a whole number of layers. You can have them masked in certain different ways. You can have them only working with different brightness values. So if you just wanna do a bright sky, and we're gonna go through all of this again in another video. Now the last thing we're gonna talk about here is just exporting a photo. So again, you come along these lists of sub menus to this sort of cog icon, which is your output menu. Now this is where you can decide how you want your photo to be exported what you want it to be as a file and things like that. So as standard, it seems to be ticked as TIFF. We're gonna come up here to JPEG, full size, highest quality. There's a few then options you can choose to like quality, size, resolution, stuff like that. We're gonna leave it exactly as it is. So it's the JPEG highest quality and we just click process. And you'll see this little bar next to it just fills up. And that is now 
processed out to the output folder that we talked about earlier. So the output subfolder within our overall session folder now has our edited photo. And there it is. And that is where all the edited photos from this session will be put. You can, of course, then take them wherever you want and do whatever you want with them. But it means you know exactly where everything is. And that, for me, is one of the big things about Capture One Pro. It is incredible for organization. It's a very powerful editing tool as well with things like the layers, with things like the color grading. I think it's fantastic. There's a lot to explore here. So like I say, the next video is most likely gonna be color grading within Catch One Pro. We're gonna do a video about all about working with layers and how you can make the most of that and all the different things you can do with the layers. But if there is anything else that you would like to see about Capture One, absolutely pop it down in the comments below and we will get to it as soon as possible. I personally love using this software. It just feels good and things just look very, very natural after they've been edited. I just feel like there's a there's a certain look to them where they just look they just look natural and, and really nice, even if you've gone quite full on with the color grading. I just think it looks great. So I'm very excited to do more videos. Absolutely let me know down in the comments. Make sure to like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. I will see you, of course, in the next video. And as always, thanks for watching.